looked around the room, one part of me was very excited and proud. The other part was profound and sad because there was maybe seven of us. Right? Think about it. Seven, you know, eight in the ease of scale that were deemed worthy enough to meet with uh, the CEO of Wells Fargo. You know, so it kind of was a humbling experience. Let me tell you a little bit about humble, uh, where I come from. I was born in the Bronx. I'm the first generation to go to college in my family. Uh, my father was a blue-collar worker, worked with a 3M company for 32 years, stirring the nastiest chemicals known to mankind to put me and my brothers and sisters through college. Uh, so I'm a local product. Um, I worked in the IC staffing industry about 10 years, and I got laid off around 2005, and I had a crazy idea, which was to start my own IC staffing company. And my mother and everybody else thought I was completely crazy, and uh, said, there's no way, there's no way that you're going to be able to do that. The, the field is too crowded. There's too many people in the, in the field. There's low barriers to entry. Everybody and their grandmother has an IT staffing company. But I've always been a little bit hard-headed and a little bit stubborn. So you tell me not to do something, I'm going to push forward and do it. So I stepped down on faith, a whole lot of faith, not too much money, but a lot of faith, and uh, started. You know, I had a great partner and, uh, who introduced me and mentored me to other people, and we started to, started to grow this thing. And uh, today, Diversant, we have over 1,000 consultants on billing, 150 employees, 10 offices, doing some great things. Uh, in a lot of ways, we're, we're just getting started. But it started off with a belief that it could be done. Right? So now that I'm here, now what? Right? I think we can double the size of diversity in the next couple of years. But it's about more than just money. And I, I, it's really about impact. What can I do now in this seat to find the next diversity? Or develop, mentor the next leader of diversity? That's what it's all about for me. Uh, you know, it's great to have a large and up-and-coming company, and that's fantastic, but what about legacy? What happens if God forbid we'll be called away from this, from this earth? What last, what's, what's left behind, right? So I take that personally, and uh, Diversant has some of the best employees on the planet, and they have helped me build a mentorship program where we actually do formally mentor no less than 12 MEPs that are in the IT staffing space because they clip the Kenton's point. It's a crowded field. And the ship has sailed in many ways. But I will say this in response. The domestic market for IT staffing is a 20, it's 20 billion dollars. Right? So there's still some ground to be covered, but it will not be as easy as it once was where one company can just pick you up, plug you in, and you've got the lion's share of spend. What I think was very interesting about what Kent spoke about was the password paradigm. When he talked about that one company that went from how much, 25, 50 million to 250, he was talking about password business. And that is what I consider corporate money laundering in a lot of ways when it comes to IT staffing and the spend that goes along with it. All that really is is taking a collaboration of other vendors, jamming up under a diverse vendor, and therefore anything that comes through the other side is magically diverse spent. Now, I've been a beneficiary of some of that work. The majority of our work is done putting people to work. That's what diversity does. But the pass-through is an easy way to bump up those numbers. So we've got some work to do about that. You know, we have to understand, is that really a viable model? Is that sustainable? I personally would not want 95% of my revenue in a pass-through type of model. Why? Because you're one business decision away from being out of business. That's just a decision. It's just like it was easy to plug you in, it's easy to unplug. Right? So that's not the business that I'm in. I'm in the staffing business. I find people jobs. And um, I'm quite proud of that. Um, you know, in the past election cycles, there was a lot of uh, chatter about job creators, job creation, what job creators do, what we look like, and how we behave. Well, Diversity fills about 1,000 jobs a year for our clients. We hire between 70 to 80 college grads a year. We have a robust veterans program where we're taking veterans coming out of Iraq and Afghanistan, training them up as for our client specification, 
put them into IT careers. We have a STEM awareness program, and our mentorship program we talked about is called the Unity Program. Well, the reason I'm bringing all this up is the, the, the diversity story does rest on the back of the supply diversity paradigm. So there is good work being done. The programs that have allowed diversity to get into some of the major corporations in this room are good programs, right? But they're not a panacea. They don't fix everything. Many of them, is, a lot of that responsibility lies upon the business owners themselves to make a personal commitment to your community. That means going back into the high schools and being an example, being a beacon to someone who sat in a high school seat just like you may have sat in, God knows, 34 years ago, and had no idea what might lie ahead of them, what the possibilities were. People like to emulate people that look like them, that they have a certain connection to, an affinity for. I will prove it. Before Tiger Woods came out, I didn't know anything about golf. I practically lived on a golf course and never set foot on it. Tiger Woods came out there and changed the game. I still stink at golf, but I played it because of him. The same thing can be true for us. You can use your business as your ministry of sorts. That can be your platform, your vehicle. When I go back into these, these schools in Newark, Camden, Patterson, and I said, put in that, that school said, yeah, people, the kids, their eyes light up. Why? Because I look like them. And I can also speak like them. And I can tell them what life was like for me when I was their age. But I decided to break free from that. Entrepreneurship can give you freedom to make a difference. It's not just about the money. It's about innovation. Right? It's about changing the way we live, changing the way we work. Being an entrepreneur for me allows me to be transformative in somebody's life. There are people that I have met in my 12 years of doing this who have started an IT staffing job because of me, of hearing me speak and telling them it can be done. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to show you. That means inviting them to my office, leading all of our people, taking them by the hand and saying, let me introduce you to the head of procurement at XYZ Company. You know, or maybe you need help building a board. Or maybe you're looking for the right tool set. This is the hard work. This is why the diversity programs sometimes come up short. Because it is impossible. There's too many MBEs, there's too many business owners, and too many different areas. For one or two people, you said, right, you could have a, a, a staff of one in a, in a diversity program. There's no way that, that person can develop. And that's what we're talking about, mentoring and developing. That is the hard work, and that is why the corporations will sometimes refer back to, hey, the spend. Billion dollars in spend. A billion dollars in spend going to an offshore company does not have the impact that spending that money with a domestic company does. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend anyone who happens to have believed in that model. It's appropriate in some settings. But diversity is invested in domestic job creation which means that a dollar spent with a firm like ours stays in the community. And I think that that's an important distinction to make. So maybe we do need to shift the paradigm a little bit. Maybe you do get to count spend. That's what domestic firms may be a little bit different. Or maybe counting spend with firms that mentor and develop others. Maybe you get more points. Maybe you can count that differently. I don't know. But I think there's a solution there uh, somewhere. You know, so what you do, man, what you do matters. I mean, being in a, in a diversity space, and I know it's changed uh, over the years, um, but it's still worthwhile. It's still a worthwhile endeavor. I think we have to tweak a few things, and we have to dig a little bit deeper, right? Because 150 million, you don't have to worry about us. You know, we're okay. We're going to grow and continue to grow. But Diverse is one of the few companies that you will see in the IT staffing space. However, they went from zero to 150 million. I'm in an SBC certified. New York is my home council, I'm proud to say. I see some of my New York, New Jersey people in the back there. Started off with zero, 
class one, two, three, and four. That's very rare, so I will agree with, with Brother Clark on that. It is rare. But we can make it less rare if we stay committed to the greater goals that we all espouse. We talk about it every ten minutes. Personal commitment. What are you? No, no, no. What, not what the corporation's going to do. What are you going to do? You made it in. You got it. Now, what are you going to do to help others? And that is what will drive the economic impact. I want to be part, I want my legacy to be that Gene White was one of the people that helped build an ecosystem that spawned additional minority owned businesses. That's what I want people to say, that he helped others at the end of the day. People will say to Gene, you know, 150 million, you know, how do you, how do you know when you're done? I said, hey, I'm never going to be done, because even after my diversity is over, I'm still going to be looking to be an investor and someone that can provide capital and mentorship and help others, but I have a personal way of looking at it. You know, we have 150 employees, and I will know I have done this the right way when I get invitations to weddings and, and birth announcements and college graduation announcements. That is when I know I have done it right. I have done good work. I made good money. Because we're all about the capitalism, let's not kid ourselves. But you can do good work and do good in the community at the same time and make money. There's a place on the curve where that does happen. I think we're close to it. We're not there yet, but with God's moment, it's going to continue until we get there. Thanks for listening.